Hey, dear friends, you know, by the Sunday masses, the readings, usually, in fact, almost all the time, you'll find in three readings, the first reading will present the theme of the mass. And that is followed by the gospel, which is the third reading, which will develop uh, this theme in greater detail. Then the middle one, which today is from the apocalypse, from Revelation, usually zeroes in one aspect of what this theme means, what results from this theme. Now, in the gospel, let's go first to the gospel. In the gospel, the apostles, still perplexed over the resurrection of Jesus, have returned to familiar ground and occupation in Galilee. In other words, they have seen Jesus twice before, but... You know, they're still in, in this world. They haven't received yet the Holy Spirit. It really teaches them and they'll, so they'll understand this. So they're totally perplexed. They don't know. Are we imagining this or what is this going on? So you know where you want to go when you're perplexed and you're mixed up and you know, you want to go home. They didn't know what was expected in them. Jesus had left them. They didn't know what they were supposed to do. So they went home to Galilee. And what did they do? Well, they were used to fishing. Peter says, I'm going fishing. They said, we're going with you. So they go out in the boat, worked all night long trying to fish. And comes the dawn. All of a sudden, this, this stranger appears on the shore looking at them. And he shouts across. He says, boys, have you caught any fish? And, uh, they answered, no, we've been trying all night long. We haven't caught a single fish. And then John is standing there looking at him. All of a sudden, the dog's, he says, it's the Lord. So, the Lord. So, Peter hitches up his pants, jumps into the sea. He's very impulsive, you know, Peter. And he swims to the shore. He can't get there fast enough. The others, 100 yards off, they come in with this huge catch they have. Jesus has indicated if they went to the side of the boat, they do get this catch. So they come in, and strangely enough, here they find Jesus is tending a little charcoal fire, cooking some fish. He says, come on to breakfast. I mean, this is an act of love in so many ways. Come on to breakfast, boys. So they come to breakfast. Now, an aside here, just an aside. Have you ever been to the Holy Land? If you have, you probably have eaten... St. Peter's fish. That comes from the Sea of Tiberias. You know, I ate that. It was the most horrible fish I've ever eaten in my life. It's absolutely full of bones. But anyway, here they were. I mean, that's that's what they had to live with. And uh, why was all this happening? Because Jesus was trying to indicate in a very nice and a loving way what they were to do. You know, that he is still with them. He's come all the way to Galilee to be with them there. And uh, and he, he indicates that they are now to be fishers. And uh, poor old Peter, uh, he, he gets Peter off the hook as well. Peter says, three times, do you love me? Peter's distressed. Well, he's embarrassed. The other apostles are hearing this. Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord. <laughs> uh, he asks the second time, do you love me? Well, Peter is really distressed by this. Then the third time he says, Lord, you know that I love you. What is this? Well, Jesus has just got Peter off the hook from his betrayal. You know, three times he betrayed him. Three times he now confesses his love for him. And when... We read in Matthew, upon this church I'll build, on this rock I'll build my church. You're Peter. On this rock I'll build my church. Now this is coming to fulfillment. You are to be what I am. You are the one to feed my sheep. By the way, I think this is beautiful. There's a certain irony here. Uh, Jesus calling us sheep. Sheep are the stupidest animals that ever existed. You know, they can't do anything themselves. They are have to be led. They have to be shown. They have to be guarded constantly. 
Well, we human beings think we're so, so intelligent. And Jesus is reducing us, I think, to who we are. Come on. You need this. And you need leaders. You need people to guide you. And he, even though he thinks this is a low animal, he himself becomes one of them. He's the lamb, takes away the sins of the world himself. So let's go here to the, uh, the second reading. The second reading from Acts throws light upon the gospel that Peter will be preaching, that Peter has preached before the Senator. This Jesus, whom the leaders had condemned to be hanged upon a tree, was worthy to be received power and riches, wisdom and strength, glory and honor and blessing, so that everything in the universe cries out to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. Now, we, we go to the, to the gospel. Uh, uh, P- Peter is, and the rest of them are being arrested, and uh, they're led before the Sanhedrin. This is the same court where Peter had denied Jesus. Now, instead of denying Jesus, Peter is standing there in the same court before the same tribunal, the same Sanhedrin, and proclaiming the gospel. Well, the Jewish listeners don't like this at all, but what are they going to do about it? He's proud of this now. Why? Because he has received the Spirit. This is after Pentecost that this happens. And uh, now the Spirit not only gives insight into what is true here, but he also gives uh, strength, you know, real strength to be able to stand up against it. They don't care what they do with them. They're delighted that they were persecuted. Now, no longer puts a land in us whatsoever. There they are. My dear friends, we, by our baptism, have been called to be apostles of Jesus. It is the vocation of every one of us here present to proclaim the gospel as befits the circumstances of your particular life. As close as the twelve were to Jesus on that morning at the Sea of Tiberias, we here are in a better position than they were then. Because unlike them, we have received the Holy Spirit. Who's the F so far? Confirmation. You've been confirmed. Having received confirmation, this reception of the Holy Spirit is likened to the apostles after Pentecost on that day in Jerusalem and assured us of the same courage and the same wherewithal that was theirs on that glorious day when they proclaimed the gospel to the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.